uh, database which stores details of all the virtual machines, all the heads, all the tails, all the IP addresses, uh, just a great big simple Postgres database. Uh, and every head and tail connects back to the brain through a uh, basically just opens a new terminal and they open a TCP socket and talk uh, at this, this uh, custom protocol that keeps the brain up to date with what's the resources that they have available. Um, so the idea is we can turn on more heads and tails and they will connect back to the uh, connect back to the, the brain. Um, uh, allowing us to sort of add and add and remove add and remove capacity. Um, uh, which um, I don't know. This is interesting. This is interesting. The number of the the the, um, uh, the, the kinds of what what it ends up with is I, I was trying to sort of show like you can have this one network of heads and tails, which is you know fairly fairly simple. They're all connecting on one network, and the brains and the heads and the, the brain and the heads and the tails are connecting back to each other on another network. And of course, all those virtual machines need access to the internet. Um, and there's yet another network for their management. So this, this means that you need, we basically need these five lands to, to sort of build, um, uh, to, to, to build a, a, a big V cluster. And uh, if this looks familiar uh, to, to anyone that's read the how to deploy VMware manual, which I haven't, apparently this is uh, uh, page 270, which is, is just not, you know, uh, it was, well, it was in fact an accident. Okay, what have I done there? Uh, that's fine. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so I was going into what the brain did, and it's it's actually just a big Postgres database of, of kind of everything you'd expect in a, in a you know uh, the, the master list of what's going on on a, on a hosting cluster. So just a list of virtual machines, which disks are which disks are connected to which ones, uh, and which physical hardware each each one each system is currently allocated to. Um, and at the front of at the front of this uh, brain is a web services API um, implemented in a Fairly, fairly ordinary sort of way, um, which allows uh, users of the cluster to uh, ask for new virtual machines, virtual machines to be deleted, uh, new IP addresses, anything that they are allowed to do is exposed through, through the web services API. The actual implementation, the way the brain actually causes it to be done, is through this spine protocol, which I'm, uh, I think is hopefully the next thing, if it's not. Um, oh, yeah, it's good. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so essentially, you have this. Um, uh, users talk to the brain through the API there. Um, the brain writes its writes those changes to the database. So you ask for a new virtual machine, it pokes it in the database first and goes, yep, done. Um, at that point, the virtual machine, nothing's happened. But what what happens in the database is the brain will go, uh, will have a background thread and goes, oh, hang on, there's meant to be a virtual machine created. Uh, and there isn't. So it needs to go back and talk to one of the heads and tails and get that change made. Um, so it's constantly you can put inconsistencies between the state that the user's asked for and what's actually going on on the, the hardware, the, the hosting hardware itself. Um, uh, so yeah, so these spine connections. This is this is kind of a, a, a custom uh, a custom protocol because I couldn't uh, I, I couldn't see a, 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 a it seems like the least worst thing to do in the, in the situation was to build a. Uh, a representation uh, because I didn't want everything kind of connecting back to the database and, and uh, using the database as a sort of uh, central point of um, uh, confusion. Uh, uh, I, I wanted a sort of separate abstraction for the heads which need to run the virtual machines and the tails which run the disks to actually present what they've got back to the brain and the brain to give them orders. So it's all it's kind of one way. Um, so this this spine protocol um, is basically a way of uh, it, it's just a very big hash table, really. It's the, the, what the brain sees is a, uh, it's got a, 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 a one sort of list of head one, head two, head three, tail one, head two, tail three, um, and when they connect up, tail one will say that there's that, basically three, three, yes, uh, it will say hello when it's connected, identifies itself, uh, and it will then send a whole bunch of messages to say what resources it's got, um, and those resources, I think, uh, hopefully, got an um, example. Yes, so it'll each, you've got resources on the tail that say things like uh, the amount of the, what the current load is, uh, the amount of memory, megabytes of RAM, which is obviously important to know what, how much capacity you've got for, for, for running virtual machines. And then you'll have these quite big resources, one for each virtual machine and one for each disk. Um, and they'll present themselves and say, hey, I've got all these disks. Um, and the brain can then update its list and say, right, well, I know this disk is on, on this, this, head, this tail. Um, and so some of these are very simple resources that, system load is just 
array, um, memory is just a number, but virtual machines and disks are, are, are structured, and I think next three, is that legible? Almost. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is at the bottom level, on each head, on each of the, the, the head of the virtual machines, uh, this is the record, this is the entire record that the head keeps of a virtual machine. It doesn't know anything more about the VM other than what it's fed, which is the brain is it. This sort of broken down list of everything that's important about running. And a lot of these, if you've run uh, KVM, uh, will be quite familiar. They just match command line arguments for, for, for running virtualizer. Um, and, and so, yeah, so you've got a little clause for each network interface that the, the, the virtual machine's got, the amount of memory cores. Um, yes, there, and a, 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 a URL to, to present as a CD ROM, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, and that's it, that's everything that, that the head needs to know to stop the virtual machine. Um, so I was, which also includes how to connect to the disks. So the head doesn't talk back to the central database, it just gets given these orders and it, it, it starts a virtual it starts a virtual machine according to them. Address unhashed passwords. Sorry? Address unhashed passwords. Unhashed passwords. Uh, these are, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, the current system, I think I think this was spotted and well I, no, I'm going to kind of just for that. I think we did actually change this to, to hash passwords simply because uh, the, the, the way we implemented the, the, the back end changed. Um, but the design of the design of the system where the brains and the heads and the tails talk on this privileged network is such that everything that happens on this privileged network is, is super important. It's like it's it's like you're sort of the PCI bus of a system or a, it's something so intimate and internal that it you, you, it's, it's of course it's security critical. Um, encryption's not and, and as, as for that reason then it's just it's not trust it, it, it's, it's it's completely trusted. So um, Although I think this has changed because we, the SSH server that needed it, you know, it was more convenient to hash it up front. That wasn't actually the reason. Um, obviously, in the, the database, then it's a, a, a little more, um, uh, we're a little more paranoid because that's a, a sort of front-facing front system. Um, so yeah, so, so that's a, the virtual machine's got a very long and complicated representation. The disk have a nice, simple representation, which is to say they've got a name, they've got a size, uh, they've got a name of a storage pool that defines. Them. Which set of disks they get created on, um, and an access control list, um, because actually all the disks are just NVD uh, devices. Um, I think what I'm going to talk about next. Oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so on this spine, you can the brain can say to a disk, uh, your size is now this, and the disk will just and it, it's just it, it's totally abstract to the brain. It's just a, a an attribute that gets changed, and the tail will come back and say, yes, that's done. So there's these update messages which say to, to which tell the heads and tails to change attributes of what they're doing. So that you can use that to change a CD-ROM or uh, up change the size of this or change the amount of memory in a virtual machine or anything that can be changed that way can be communicated on the spine like that. Um, so so yeah, so the disk that 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 representation up there uh, is simply enough to start an NVD server of a, of a giant file, uh, and that's all. Uh, that's basically what the, the tail servers do, is they have a set of disk pools here for one for usually labelled by uh, uh, labeled by the type of storage that's in there. And we've kind of flip-flopped a bit on, on what we're going to add. At the moment we've got slightly too many, we've got three different kinds of storage and, and arguably they're not, you know, uh, there's not a sort of commercial decision as to which ones people are going to want to use and pay for, but you can obviously, they're just the usual sort of storage decisions what size of disk, what speed, what, how many spindles, how big is the RAID, how reliable, this kind of thing. So the idea is we could sort of throw different types of pools at it and the disks could be put on one and moved between them. Um, the key to um, moving the, and, and, and they're represented simply on these, these pools, they're just great big extended three file systems and each disk is a big file. It's, it's no more complicated than that. Um, they're served by uh, an NVD server that we've uh, put together uh, a new, uh, yeah, a, a new proposal called Flex MVD, which um, it, it basically we, we, we were using another uh, MVD server called XMVD, uh, which was sort of designed for virtual machine environments. But but there were a couple of points where, or there were enough points where we, we felt that a rewrite was was kind of the, the, the simpler option. Um, so Flex MVD it just simply serves disks over 
um, uh, network storage protocol, um, which has been around for, for you know, a long time, 13 years. Um, and PlexMBD just lets you um, serve, what it is, the, the main feature is simply that you can move the storage between uh, tails, between storage pools, um, without, uh, without any downtime. So each disk, each disk on the storage LAN has its own IPv6 address. Um, and so when we want to move a disk from one to another, we tell the, what we, we start another copy of the disk somewhere else. We tell the first one to start copying its blocks over to the other one, and then when it's finished, uh, they, there's a protocol between them where one will disappear, the other one will take the same IP address, and they'll carry on serving. And the, the virtual machine that was using the disk just sees it, get, it gets disconnected, but it immediately tries to reconnect, and the, the, the actual kernel running on top doesn't, doesn't see a difference. Um, there's a sort of blip as the IO, the IO fails over, essentially. Um, so yeah, so FlexMBD is, is a bit that we've uh, the, the pretty, much, uh, uh, pretty much done now, so that's, that's been released. Uh, really this, uh, as, as free software. Um, uh, um, now it's five minutes, so do you want to know about how the VM is supervised? I think this is kind of possibly too much, too much boring. Uh, well, it's just, you know, I was talking about all those VLANs, and actually most of that complexity is centered on the, the heads, on the virtual machines, which are, um, because we, we you know, they've got six. They've got a lot of Ethernet interfaces, and they need to be able to access lots of different access networks. So if you've, if you've got a private network or a public, we've got private networks. We've got a bunch of servers, a bunch of servers of your own, or, or public networks which are which are shared. And so each head needs to be able to connect to lots of access networks, which is um, uh, where yeah. So there's a lot of complexity in the, the network uh, network sets up on the head, but I can kind of skip over that. Um, I should anyway. Um, um, the uh, yes, another another interesting toy which has been um, uh, 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 part part of the brain, part of the way it organises the, the network around the virtual machines uh, is it uses BGP to connect to um, uh, to the to the core routers and share the routing information. So if you ask for a new IP address, uh, the brain simply adds it to its database, and there's a separate program called BGP feeder, which I've I've seen implemented in. Python and, um, uh, Python and Perl as well, which simply just takes a file full of routing information and feeds it up to the core routers. Um, and that way we can translate kind of simple text-based updates to actual real routing information that, that gets propagated through our network. Um, uh, there's a, there's a, 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 a custom backend to power DNS so that whatever's in the database, whatever the virtual machines you create automatically have uh, DNS created for them. Uh, again, just fed straight from the straight from the Postgres database. Um, the, the sort of some of the stuff we're getting to now, having run this for well, two years really, um, and and starting taking uh, starting taking money for it, is uh, how to organise virtual machines as you get more and more demand. Um, and we've kind of gone from um, because the KVM KVM itself can can live migrate running virtual machines between um, uh, between heads, which which happens. Fairly frequently, you need to sort of have a decision on when you get a new machine coming in, which of our, which system, which head system you put it on. And we started out with this naive view of just spreading, spreading the load across all the heads, uh, which works wonderfully, except that the largest size of virtual machine that you can create steadily shrinks. So at the point at which your cluster is half full, you can only create half the amount of memory that's on the largest, <laughs> the largest head. Um, and so we've switched to what, what is arguably an equally canonical uh, application structure, which is to, to fill the books. Um, which actually, given the way that Linux and KVM work, you think that CPU scheduling is completely reliable, uh, is not as mad as it looks. What it means is that if someone comes along with a giant virtual machine, you've always got the maximum uh, capacity left to, to serve them. Um, so, in one minute, I am going to... Uh, I demo. Sorry? <laughs> yeah. some color. Well, that was obviously, obviously it started out as a one-line uh, a, a one bit of color, but I, I, I was trying to think of a way to expand it, so my color wasn't good enough, so. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so there's a bit of, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, just uh, uh, fast Amazon bashing, really. Um, you, you can you can work that out, so. And um, uh, a bit on our, our, our deployment practices, uh, which uh, this is kind of the start of a new development team for, for, for us, you know, two years ago, really. 
Um, so I, I guess none of this, um, uh, you know, we, we, we practice some pretty, pretty fast. Uh, I say two years, but we, we actually have virtual machines running within, within a few months of, of, of development. So, um, uh, and uh, yes, it, there was a, one of the, sorry, this is good. Going, going back to the, the head, the head up tray, this is, um, uh, we actually, in order to keep things simple on the head, we've actually got this system where it doesn't store anything on disk. Uh, the upshot is we can't stop the virtual machine, we can't stop the, uh, uh, the, the supervision, the head software that actually supervises the virtual machines. In order to upgrade that software, we have to live migrate uh, all the virtual machines off of every head. So we all have to do this kind of shuffle. We have to keep one frame or at least one frame, uh, and then when it's time to upgrade, we start shuffling all the virtual machines onto the empty head, then this is okay and we can upgrade it, and then we move everything over to here, we upgrade that one and so, and so on. Um, uh, and that had the sort of the advantage of being able to, uh, one, it made sure that the migration code worked because there was no way to do it without it. And also, I mean, we're not writing any persistence code, any sort of, uh, any extra code to, to keep these virtual machines running across software restarts. It just, it was part of the design that it didn't happen. Um, and there's kind of a lot of, of, of what happened next and uh, design, but I'll, I'll kind of, um, uh, I think I've got my 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll, if there are any, any, any questions, uh, I'll uh, feel free to uh, fire them at me. Uh, is this the question round? Uh, yes. Already? Because yeah. I had that one. Far, far uh, away. Well, I, I was kind of curious because this is a pretty new system. Uh, when you first uh, deployed it, uh, can you name an interesting problem you had and how you solved it? Uh, an interesting problem we have in how we solved it. Um, I, I think it was that kind of first argument where I, because some of this was was um, it, it was I guess a sort of people uh, people issue because we were starting a new new development team uh, to to a degree and I'm sort of used to just sort of hacking hacking and delivering at the same time you know uh, which is sort of eight, eight years into a company you know, it's, 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 it's fairly late uh, and it was kind of justifying that decision about how to upgrade about how we should upgrade the, the head because I, I had programmers saying that look this is this is silly you can't stop the process and restart it without killing all the virtual machines and I said uh, my, my argument was simply that uh, you know we need it's part of the design goal that we need to move virtual machines between between heads uh, and without forcing this migration every time we're not going to get that quite right we're not going to practice it um, uh, and, and I was kind of I guess I was kind of Vindicated, and, 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 and so that's how it's done, and that's how it's done routinely. Um, uh, and that was sort of vindicated when it came to discs, which had where we hadn't practiced, and we did have migration problems. So the same, possibly the same, uh, same issue would, would, would have applied if, um, if the, the disk migration code had been in place uh, then. Um, so Martin's. Uh, Sorry, we're out of time. This so, um, Matt, I think it's one of our sponsors, and we'll be in the pub later. So if you have further no. questions, I suggest you put a pint in his hand and ask them. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Matt. Thank you.